Welcome career advancers and high achievers to the OCS YouTube channel. I'm Kara Dennison. I'm an executive career coach, a certified human resources professional and a resume writer and a Forbes writer. And I am here to talk to you this week about imposter syndrome. Welcome to this week's video. We are here to talk about imposter syndrome and most likely if you are watching this video, you have probably suffered from imposter syndrome at some point in your life. And in fact, we're going to be talking about some of the reasons why you feel imposter syndrome, the five types of imposter syndrome, how we can start rewiring and reworking our brains to overcome imposter syndrome, why it happens and how to build confidence to overcome, continue to achieve and get past some of this because we deserve to be in the places that we are, even if we don't feel like it. We've got a really great video, lots of good information for you. So let's dive in. So imposter syndrome really is that internal belief that you're not competent or not as competent as others perceive you to be. It's that persistent fear of being exposed. Ah, I'm a fraud. No, I don't belong here. I don't deserve this. Right. And what's interesting is that most of the time it is going to be people who truly do deserve to be where they are, are the ones that feel imposter syndrome the most. It's actually linked to the Dunning Kruger effect, which is actually where people with low ability tend to overestimate their ability and those with high ability tend to underestimate theirs. So it's a different correlation, right? And I'm sure that you've gone about your life and you've seen people who are super, super confident that maybe should it be? And people who are super, super experienced and skilled who have a lot of self doubt and low self confidence. That's the Dunning Kruger effect. And that's where a lot of imposter syndrome come from. According to the international journal of behavioral science, 70% of people have experienced feeling imposter syndrome. A lot of what it comes from in my experience, being a high achiever myself and working with high achievers and leaders is it comes from working so much towards a goal and having that in your sight for so long that once we finally achieve it, we look around and we go, Oh my gosh, I'm finally here. Is this actually real? Do other people believe that I deserve it? I'm at a different place in my life and my career now. Do I actually belong here now? And then that perpetuates that cycle of needing to work really hard and prove that we deserve to be here and to work towards that next step, right? It becomes this kind of cycle where high achievers need to keep going and need to keep achieving in order to prove their worth and to keep going. Now it's not necessarily always a bad thing because if you look at where you are, I bet you a little bit of that imposter syndrome has driven you to achieve that fear of, Oh no, I don't want people to think I'm a fraud. So I got to keep working. It actually has driven you to keep working, keep achieving. And people with imposter syndrome tend to be at high levels in their career. They tend to be successful, but there's a dark side of that, right? Because you've created a non healthy relationship and a non healthy motivating factor in order to get that achievement that at some point you will burn out. So let's talk a little bit about the five main types of imposter syndrome. Maybe you can tell me in the comments, which one you are. The first one is going to be the perfectionist. So the perfectionist is really consumed with doing everything just right. So they set excessively high standards are never satisfied with their work and no matter how well they perform. So an example of this is going to be a manager or a boss who constantly reworks their team's projects, never trusting that anything is really good enough, right? That's going to be really tough because here's the thing, a perfectionist is never going to be satisfied because nothing is perfect. Perfection for me is going to be different than perfection for you. And so once the perfectionist 
comes to start understanding that done and great enough is better than perfection, that's when the magic happens because perfect will never exist. And if we strive for perfection, then nothing will ever be completed, right? The next one is the superhero. This superhero type of imposter syndrome, it refers to the type that pushes them to work harder and harder to measure up. They feel like they need to constantly prove their worth and they often sacrifice their personal life and their well being in the process. They feel like they have to always be the superhero to come in and save the day. A good example of this might be an executive who works late every single night on the weekend, always takes on extra projects, always says yes. And despite their accolades, despite all the praise that they get, they fear that slowing down is going to expose them to be a fraud. The problem with being the superhero is that eventually you will burn out. Eventually you will not have enough time and energy in the day to take on that one more. And eventually resentment's going to build too. The superhero needs to learn how to take care of themselves because without you, nothing will get done, right? The next one is going to be the natural genius. Oof, this is not me. The natural genius believes that competence, it's innate. It is the skills are inside. If they have to work hard or struggle to get something, they assume that they have, they're bad at it because everything has come easy to them up until this point. They tackle a new sport in school. They tackle a new um, skill or hobby and they're innately good at it. And so when they do try and tackle something and they're not good at it, immediately they feel like a fraud and a failure. So this could be like an artist who really excels and then is exploring a new technique and it doesn't come easy. And so then they fear that maybe they, as a totality of a person, is not talented, is a failure. And what the natural genius needs to to come to realize is that all of us are gifted with different talents, gifts, strengths, and weaknesses that make us unique. And when we can work as a team, that's when we get things done even better, right? Speaking of, the next one is the soloist, the solo flyer. The soloist feels that asking for help is a weakness. I can do it all myself. I've gotten it here on my own and I don't need anyone else because asking for help means that they're a fraud, that they're weak. They value self-reliance to the extreme. Who here is like that? They feel that they have to accomplish tasks on their own in order to be competent. And if they have to ask for help, they're a fraud. They're a failure and someone's going to find them out. But here's the thing, right? We can't do it all on our own. In order to achieve greatness and in order to go after the goals that you want, we learn and we grow and we become more powerful, more knowledgeable, more skilled when we accept help from others. Once the soloist is able to put aside their ego, get over that fear of asking for help, that's when they start thriving and actually achieving more. The last one, the fifth one is the expert. Mm, This one's tough. The expert feels like they have to know every piece of information before they are competent. They have to seek additional certifications, trainings, degrees before they can know enough to take action. Have you ever met someone who is like, "Ah, I'll get started once I YouTube everything, Google everything, maybe get a certification but then they never actually go and take action. The problem with the expert is that there's learning to be found in the doing. There's learning to be found in the mistakes in the hands-on in learning from others as you do. But the fear that comes in is feeling like there's going to be mistakes and failures and that people are going to find out, Ooh, I don't know. So those are the five types of imposter syndrome. Which one are you? And how do we overcome? So I gave a couple of ways to show case the the downsides of having these types of imposter syndrome, but let's be grateful for just a second. Let's just be grateful for a second, because if you're a high achiever and you've had imposter syndrome, we want to, we want to take a moment and give ourselves a break because those are old limiting belief systems that don't serve us anymore. 
because as you can see, those paths are going to lead us down to burnout, to high stress, to lack of innovation and creativity, but they got you to where you are and we want to be grateful. And I encourage you now, if you are ready to change these habits and break free from imposter syndrome, let's just take a minute and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Old version of myself for having these belief systems to get me to where I am because, because of the fact that I felt I needed to be a perfectionist, that I felt I needed to be a superhero or a natural genius or a soloist or an expert, I was able to accomplish this amount of stuff. And I was able to get to where I am right now. And because of all of that, I have this knowledge, these skills, and these experiences that got me to where I am. But I no longer want to move forward and achieve more with this fear, with this fear that I'm a fraud or I'm a failure because I'm not, because I'm not, because I am here and I worked hard and that's half the problem. We have found that with imposters, they are so focused on that negative aspect, that what if aspect of I did all of this, but what if something goes wrong? Imposters, people who have imposter syndrome, what we have found is that they are readily available and able to recognize the hard work that other people have put in to reach their accomplishments, but they look for external factors as to how they got to their accomplishments. For instance, Susie worked really hard and put in the work and the time, educated herself, used her skills, and that's why she deserves that promotion. I happen to be in the right place in the right time, and that's why I got promoted. Negating all the fact that I also worked hard, I put in the time and the experience and the skills and the education, and networked my way in in order to talk to the right person at the right time, and explain why I deserve that. And that's why I got the promotion. So how do we do this? How do we flip it for ourselves? Because we can easily see how people have worked hard to get their wins, but we negate it for ourselves. The first and foremost, what we need to do is we need to start celebrating our wins. It sounds kind of silly. It sounds a little bit like, is that it? But what we have found is when high achievers, people with imposter syndrome are going after goals and they're working so hard towards it. They achieve it. And then they, they immediately go into that cycle of, I got to keep going. I got to keep achieving. I got to get the next thing so that people, people don't find me out. But that missing link is the acknowledgement and the celebration that you did the damn thing. You did it. And so the first thing that I recommend is setting up a kudos folder or a celebration folder or a notebook where you write down your wins. This is my win notebook, right? And every time you accomplish something, I want you to take that moment and write it down and celebrate it. However you want to celebrate it, whatever it is that you want to do to celebrate, you deserve it because you've worked hard. And I bet you, if you looked at your friend who also worked hard and achieved the things that you did, you would tell them the same thing. So I'm here to tell you, you need to celebrate your wins because psychologically your brain needs to be told I did that thing and I can cement it in that I achieved it and I worked really hard. We need to tell ourselves that it completes the cycle of goal achievement. You set a goal, you set an intention, you visualize what it would be like to achieve it, all of that good stuff. And then once you achieved it, how did you complete the loop? If you're not celebrating the win, if you're not acknowledging the hard work, you're not completing the loop and we need to complete that loop or else your brain is just going to leave it open and your brain is going to think we never finished it. We never achieved it. So we need to celebrate. Plus you deserve it. You deserve a little fun. You deserve a little celebration. You worked hard. You achieved a goal. Let's do it. The other thing is to recognize your hard work. Even if you haven't achieved it yet, every day, write down something or acknowledge in your brain something that you have done when it comes towards achieving that thing that you're working towards. Because studies have shown that most of the time when it comes to imposters, it's not necessarily the thing that you've achieved that's most valuable. It's the hard work that you've put in 
towards it. That acknowledgement and that recognition is most important to people with imposter syndrome. Tell yourself, tell your spouse, tell your friend what you've done that day and recognize it. Once you can start overcoming this imposter syndrome, you can still achieve success. You just do it from a place of self-love instead of self-hatred. And the great part of this is that you get to go further. You get to achieve more because you actually get to recognize your success and your achievements, how you got there, learn from mistakes, and become that much more knowledgeable, strategic, and powerful to go achieve more. And you deserve that. We've talked a lot about what imposter syndrome is, why it happens, and how you can start today implementing some ways to overcome it and rechange your mindset and those neural pathways simply by acknowledging your hard work every day and celebrating those big wins. And I want to hear from you in the comments. One, which of the five imposter syndromes do you resonate with the most? For me, perfectionist, that one hit hard. The other thing I want to hear from you is what have you achieved recently and how did you celebrate? Let me know in the comments below. Even if you haven't celebrated, I want to know what one of your biggest accomplishments has been recently. It could be in your career, in your personal life, a hobby, any of that stuff, because I want to celebrate you. I will respond to every single comment and I will celebrate you. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I would love for you to subscribe. It helps our channel out. We have a podcast that's free. It drops every week. It's called the Career Advancement Academy, where we talk about all of this type of stuff and give you actionable tips to advance in your career. And if you would love for us to help you out with your resume and LinkedIn so that you can advance in your career and tell your story, we have many courses. We have resume writing services and solutions, go ahead and check out the link in the bio. It was great talking with you today. Let me know about your achievements and your imposter syndrome in the comments so I can make sure to come and celebrate you. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching.